The new CPC leadership made their public debut today. General Secretary of the CPC Central Committee Xi Jinping introduced the members of the new leadership and ran through future prospects. What exactly are the agendas and the goals in CPC's future, and how will China embrace what it calls socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era? Before our discussion, take a look at this. China's new leadership lineup capturing the world's attention. Xi Jinping was re-elected to his post atop the party. He addressed the media and introduced the other newly elected members of Politburo Standing Committee. Xi thanked party members for their continued trust. Here, on behalf of the newly elected central leadership, I wish to express our heartfelt thanks to all other members of the party for the trust they have placed in us. We will work diligently to meet our duty, fulfill our mission, and be worthy of their trust. All the members of the leadership have extensive experiences. Each one has held party or administrative posts at provincial level, and this together with their experience working in the Central Party Organization gives them a comprehensive understanding of China. They all have master's degrees and above in areas such as economics, law and management, which will prove valuable as they help govern the nation. Xi Jinping said the party's new leaders will play crucial roles in the years to come. With decades of hard work, socialism with Chinese characteristics has entered a new era. In this new context, we must get a new look, and more importantly, make new accomplishments. The coming five years between the 19th and 20th Party Congress is a period in which the time frames of the two centenary goals will converge. Not only must we deliver the first centenary goal, we must also embark on the journey towards the second centenary goal. Another common thread tying the seven leaders on the standing committee together is their commitment to pushing forward reform and opening up policies. General Secretary Xi Jinping himself is a strong advocate of opening up the economy. At the press conference, he said the party's leaders are determined to implement deeper reforms and further open China to the world. The 19th CPC National Congress has rolled up the blueprint for the country's development in the next five years, and now it is expected the members of the Standing Committee of the Political Bureau will turn the guidelines into specific policies and actions to pursue a higher quality development and a more prosperous nation. So, Yun, CGTN, reporting from the Great of the People, Beijing. And for more on the real issues behind the plan, let's go to our panelists. The Beijing studio, Xue Lan, who is the dean of the School of Public Policy and Management at Tsinghua University. Mm -hmm. Professor Xue, it's such a pleasure to have you. My pleasure. And also joining us in Singapore, we're also honored to have Kishore Mahbubani, who is the dean of the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy at National University of Singapore. Professor Mahbubani, welcome as well. I want to start with you, Professor Mahbubani, about your you. general impression, thank you, sir, of who these people are on the standing committee of the Politburo. Are they, as you see it, going to help us implement China's blueprint? Well, if you want my overall impression, I would say I, this is a very strong and powerful signal that China is going to remain politically stable for a long time. I mean, the, the, the 19 party congress went very smoothly, the key messages were conveyed very clearly, and the leadership succession was made very smoothly. So the sense of confidence that it gives in China's future is very strong. What about you, Professor Xue, from uh, the Chinese perspective? You see these gentlemen, seven mm -hmm. of them, all the 50th generation, mm -hmm. and all, at most of them, have served in the central level for really quite some time yeah. after coming from the local level. And you see they're coming from different kinds of areas. So what is your impression? Who 
What kind of characteristic are you going to use to define this group? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that first of all, I think uh, I fully, uh, you know, share uh, you know Kishore's uh, impression that mm -hmm. they are very confident, and also I think indeed I think they bring a lot of uh, continuity uh, to the, you know the way how China is going to develop in the future. Mm -hmm. I think also this generation of the people are the ones that who. Uh, I think most of them are in, in, in a sort of, you know, sort of born in the 1950s. And these are the generation that who've seen China's ups and downs over the last uh, 40 or even actually, you know, 50 years. Uh, they've gone through China's, you know, rapid development in the 1950s, uh, 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 sorry, the 1960s. And then you see the Cultural Revolution and then the reform of the 40, 40 years of reform. Mm. So they've seen the uh, uh, the suffering of, uh, of the Cultural Revolution and, 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 and also they've seen that when you have a, you know, a stability in, in, in focusing on the uh, economic and social development and then you know, what, what this brings. Mm -hmm. So I think they bring a lot of uh, you know, the wealth of uh, experience over the last uh, 40 years of uh, reform and openness. Right. At the ceremony in which the new leadership of the Chinese Communist Party is meeting the press in the Great Hall of People earlier today. Chinese Communist Party General Secretary Xi Jinping has been, of course, re-elected this time. And he said in his presentation at the very beginning about China's commitment and Chinese Communist Party's commitment to reform and opening up. And it's very need to be noted that these two phrases are being used at the same time, not just reform, not just opening up, but mixed reform and opening up. Uh, Professor Mabubani, what would you say about the message he's trying to send? Uh, s sorry, what would I say about the selection of the leaders? No, but rather the message by Xi Jinping. Can you repeat? Your I am repeating my sentence. The message yes. by Xi Jinping at this presentation he gave when he introduced the seven members of the Politburo, he said, reform and yes. opening up. And he mentioned both of the phrases at the same time when, once and again. To you, what does that say? Yes. Well, I mean, it's, it's, you know, what's impressive about the Chinese process it's about how clear your succession process is, you know. And the, the, the fundamental strength uh, of the Chinese Communist Party is the meritocratic process by which your leaders uh, are selected. And, you know, that's, there's a, we all know there's a very thorough process before these leaders are selected. And they're all tested in different fields, and they have their accomplishments, and then they're given the senior positions. Not many countries can replicate what China is doing in this area. And I think your system of meritocracy is going to hold China in very good stead uh, in the years to come. Yeah. Well, I guess you are commenting about uh, the continuity rather, though my question yeah. is more about reform and opening up. Uh, yeah, Professor no. Xue, you want to come in? Yes, like to I, I, I think, uh, you know, indeed, in terms of, the, I think that uh, I, I agree with uh, Kishore on the process. I think in terms of the, the uh, reform and, and the openness, actually that has been the key feature of China's uh, development over the last 40 years. Uh, in a way, it, it really, I think, builds on sort of a, a, a cycle that on the one hand that uh, when you open up and you actually, uh, you learn a lot of new things and that actually helps you to see, you know, what needs to be reformed and, you know, what, what's the, uh, you know, the things that in China that need to be, to be changed. Mm. So when you uh, make, make, you know, when we make those uh, reforms, then actually you create better conditions for opening up. And so they actually, so they, they really, I think, build on a sort of a kind of a, a cycle that, you know, one helps the other. And I think that's actually, I, I would say that we, one secret of China's uh, success mm. over the last 40 years. You know, Professor Xue, there earlier were concerns whether China is going to continue mm -hmm. on the path of opening up. You mm -hmm. heard concerns from foreign companies, also mm -hmm. heard it from longtime China observers. But this time it seems that Mr. Xi Jinping mm -hmm. is purposefully trying to make it very clear at the very beginning mm -hmm. after he made to the public the members of the Standing Committee Politburo mm -hmm. uh, actually there 
that has been a specific point you would like to point it out. That, that to me, is quite interesting. It seems that China is listening to the voices from other parts of the world. Professor Xie. Yes, indeed, actually, if you look at the uh, Party Congress report that Xi Jinping delivered at the beginning of the, uh, the Party Congress, actually, he talked a lot about, you know, in terms of the specific paragraphs about how, actually, you know, China will continue uh, its uh, opening up uh, and also actually to, uh, to work with the international community mm. on many uh, global issues. So in fact, I think China is not closing up, but rather it's actually to, go to further open up, uh, not just you know, in the economic front, but also on addressing uh, many global, uh, global issues. Mm. Uh, Xi Jinping also mentioned in that presentation about some of the barometers that the public here in China and those from all over the world will be able to evaluate the work of the uh, Standing Committee of the Politburo. He talked about several time posts in the coming five years. Five years, we'll see several important conjunctures and milestones. Next year marks the 40th anniversary of the launch of China's opening up. 2019 marks the 70th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. And the target date for the establishing of a moderately prosperous society across all metrics in the year 2020. CPC will mark its centenary in the year 2021, one year after another. Professor Mabubani, I hope you could hear me now very clearly. Will these, every year that mentioned earlier, be a test for the Chinese Communist Party and China's capability to do the real work, not just talk. Well, you know, I'm, I'm actually very impressed uh, by the big ambitions that have been spelled out uh, in the, uh, in the mis uh, Mr. Xi Jinping's speech. And, you know, when he set the concrete goals of what China is going to achieve in 2021, and I think in 2049, I think this, 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 these are very inspiring messages to put across to the people to say that, hey, if we continue doing what we are doing, we're going to get there. And you know, there are not many countries in the world uh, that share the same confidence in the future uh, that China does. I mean, if you compare, for example, the Chinese condition with that of many Western countries, you'll find that many of the Western countries there's a lot of pessimism today. They're not sure what the world will be like five years, ten years down the road. And they look at China, and China's expressing confidence about where it's going to be in 2021 and 2049. Mm. And that's a very impressive thing about China. Mm. But on the other hand, the Professor Mabubani, you also heard very clearly from Xi Jinping, there are several things that China has in mind when it comes to international relations. First of all, it's the security, territorial integrity. And we all understand it has something to do with the South China Sea. On the other hand, he is also talking about the global community of shared future. How do you see these different kinds of keywords being mentioned in a very short speech on 13 minutes? And what kind of message do you think he is trying or you are getting from that? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I'm glad that uh, uh, President Xi Jinping also referred uh, to the global dimension too. In fact, I was in Davos myself in January 2017 when I heard the very impressive speech uh, that President Xi Jinping gave in Davos when he spelled out a vision that would work for China and would also work for the rest of the world. And yes, you know, we live in a time when American leadership of the global order is retreating. And if the number one power in the world is retreating from global leadership, there are much higher expectations of China and China's role uh, in the global community. And I think the messages that he provided about what, about what China's contributions will be to the global community were also very reassur reassuring to the world. Mm. Uh, Professor Xue, though, having heard from the earlier report delivered by Xi Jinping as the Secretary mm -hmm. General for the 19th uh, Party Congress, the report at the very beginning of the 19th Party Congress, some have been concerned whether China will be becoming ever more assertive given China's attitude on territorial integrity. Professor Xue, how do you think China is likely to keep that balance? On the one hand, 
maintain territorial integrity, on the other hand, be able to be a peace builder and also work on what China called global community of shared future. Well, I think, first of all, I think that uh, China's attitude in, in terms of, you know, uh, the, the sovereignty, on the sovereignty issue, uh, China has been very consistent in, in maintaining its, uh, you know, its, uh, its policy and attitude. So I think that actually has not changed. Uh, I think the second thing is that actually China, as China is becoming more developed, China actually has, uh, um, uh, it actually now is becoming a sort of, a, a, a really sort of momentum a builder actually for the global development. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, that part, I think China will continue to play that role. And also China is, play the ro is playing the role of a, a global stability mm -hmm. on some key issues like, you know, of uh, really sort of, uh, of major global concerns such as uh, climate change. Right. So I think on those sort of global policy issues, China will becoming sort of, a, I mean, it's becoming a, a sort of leader, a, a leadership role, is, is playing the leadership role in, in, in those issues. Mm. So I think on, on those, uh, you know, uh, those roles, actually China uh, is playing, uh, you know, I think the, the role that actually is uh, increasingly, uh, I think, becoming a, a, a critical force mm. for global peace and development. Mm. So I think it's, uh, um, that contribution, I think it's uh, uh, increasingly more recognized. Mm. Professor Mabubani, you know, as you said earlier, by comparison, China is doing so well these days when you have chaos in the other countries. But on the other hand, this is, will be a test for China, that whether it will still have the momentum to move forward as it did before, when others were actually also celebrating their advantages. So how do you see China's courage and the rallying capabilities in moving forward when the rest of the world seem to have some problems of their own? So you, you were asking about China's capability to move forward in the coming decade? Yes. Determination. Is that determination strong enough to you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually, I remain very uh, uh, optimistic uh, for China's prospects because, you know, the, the, the strength of China is that you have a very solid and realistic understanding uh, of the state of the world and you also understand how you have to change and adapt with the times. For example, uh, in the first phase of China's growth, you depended a lot on the export markets, but at a time when the Western developed countries, as you know, uh, are going through a very difficult time, an export-led strategy is not going to be the answer for China in the next phase of development. And I thought I heard in the speech, if I heard it correctly, uh, a recognition that in, in the next few decades, China's got to rely more uh, on itself in some areas, uh, raise domestic demand, mm. raise in, uh, improve innovation in China. So on that basis, uh, and you know, I was in China recently, and, you know, it, it, the, 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 the spirit of innovation in your business sector right. is actually quite awesome. Mm. I mean, what you do with mobile payments and so on and so forth. So I'm actually, if you're asking me whether I'm optimistic uh, about China's capacity uh, to move forward, I, I would say yes, I'm very optimistic. All right. And now we are talking about the new development of Chinese Communist Party. And the important thing of today, of course, is the reveal to the public and the mm -hmm. world, the standing committee member of the Politburo. Okay, so what kind of role will they play, Professor Xue, given your knowledge of Chinese mm -hmm. political mm -hmm. system? They are the core leadership of the mm -hmm. party, so how is that likely to have an impact on the policy mm -hmm. for the future? I think they are sort of the core decision-making groups for the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, which actually is the, the you know, ruling party in China. So basically for the major decisions in terms of you know, major directions of where China is going to go, I think they're the key players. So I think indeed, I think they, uh, you know, this core leadership uh, is, I think, uh, as uh, many have already expressed, that uh, you know, it's showing the, the, you know, the confidence and showing the continuity mm. for uh, China's future. Mm. And also, what would this mean? I mean, if you look at their backgrounds, mm -hmm. if you look at the things that they have done, mm -hmm. are they reformists? Mm -hmm. Or are they being, as being portrayed as conservative? Mm -hmm. 
um, what kinds of direction when they are being put into different parts of the leadership mm -hmm. later mm -hmm. in the country's government will they play eventually? Well, I think the, the, these are, you know, as a collective group, uh, they they bring very, you know, very rich experience in, in China's development. Uh, first of all, I think, um, you know, out of the seven people, I think probably uh, at least six of them have a lot of rich experience working in various places in, in the, you know, sort of very, uh, you know, the, the sort of the, the frontier of China's reform development, you know, in, in, in Guangdong and Zhejiang and, and Shanghai, and also, but also people who have worked in the interior part of China. So first of all, they understand China's, you know, as a whole, mm. you know, the, the, the so-called uneven development and the, the challenges, you know, China is facing. So, so they have that rich experience, first of all. The second also, they worked in, in different areas. Uh, some worked on the economic front, but others have worked on the social development, and others have worked on the, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, political, uh, uh, you know, uh, process building. So I think that, you know, as a whole, they, you know, build a team. So it's very hard to say, you know, who and who is reform or conservative. Mm. They, this is a team of very practical, you know, uh, uh, sort of people who are, who are moving China forward. Mm. And, and that's sort of the, what we see uh, in, in, in this whole And team. the goals of the group has mm -hmm. been said very clearly by mm -hmm. Xi Jinping at the press conference when they were meeting mm -hmm. the press earlier today. Thank you so much. I want to thank both of you for being with us. Professor Xue Lan here in Beijing and Professor Kishore Mabubani in Singapore. Really appreciate it, gentlemen.